few days ago I published a video of me talking about things to think about if you're thinking about becoming a celebrant. And while I certainly wasn't trying to put anybody off, I was trying to make sure that people consider all the challenges of this work before they come on and do it. But today I thought I would talk about the rewards from this work uh, because it is hugely rewarding in so many ways and it's important for me to put that out there for anybody who maybe I have a habit of coming on and making these wee videos saying okay you want to be a celebrant but here's what you have to think about because the truth is it's not for everybody and I don't want anybody spending their money and coming along in the course and then realising for whatever reason I can't do this. I would much rather that people consider all the options and make really informed choices. So that's why I make these wee videos. And also because all over social media you get people saying, oh, people don't know what they're coming into and all the training organisations are like, yeah, come in, anybody can be a celebrant. I don't want to do that. I want to, but I don't necessarily think that's accurate. But anyway, I want to work with integrity. I want to make sure there's always full transparency so that anybody that walks through the doors to take part in my training knows that it's not going to be a walk in the park. But it's such rewarding work. When I first came to this work eight years ago, and the first ceremony I did was a wedding blessing ceremony, and I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. But I had friends asked me if I would conduct their wedding ceremony for them, and it, you know, I subsequently found out I couldn't do le the legal part, so they did that separately. And I did the wedding blessing, I did a hand fasting, I had no idea what hand fasting was. And um, was kind of making it up as I was going along. But what I did really get was this sense of kinship, this sense of family and friends coming together, this sense of community and joy and, and love and laughter. I've been married twice and been divorced twice. <laughs> I walk an advert for my I do work and um, and I've been very happily single for four years now but when you've been married and divorced twice you can be left feeling a wee bit jaded by the whole idea of romance and soulmates and love but I get to see that every single day so yeah that first ceremony, it was so full of love and laughter and joy and it was just so beautiful to be a part of that and to to and and a big part of that, you know, helping that couple to walk over that threshold from singledom to to becoming a betrothed couple. It was just lovely. And so then I made the decision, that's what I want to be doing with my life. And so I left my job. I was a college lecturer and I packed it in and I went and did some training down south and it wasn't the best training in the world I'm not going to say who it was with but I, I don't think it I, th I think there were gaps and I think it could have been done better not all of it but some of it uh, but anywho, I came out I, I, I can't say too much because eight years later I'm more successful than I could ever have been so I came out of that and I immediately went out and started to engage with funeral directors and just meeting them and chatting to them and telling them a bit about my background and getting listening to their wisdom and their expertise. And I was very fortunate that through a combination of hard work and willingness to put myself out there and engaging with the right people, I started to get work as a funeral celebrant really quickly. And which was great, I absolutely loved it. But I very soon began to realise just what uh, what a responsibility it is to be asked to conduct somebody's end of life ceremony. It's a huge responsibility because families only have one chance to get it right. 
and they're interesting you to do that. The funeral directors are interesting you to do that. So it's a huge responsibility. But when you get it right, oh my goodness. To I did a, a funeral service on Wednesday there. And it was on Wednesday morning. By the time I got home on Wednesday afternoon, that family, so the, the chief mourners, had sent me an email to say, we just wanted to say thank you so much for the beautiful ceremony this morning. So the very same day that they have laid the loved one to rest, and this son, in this case, it was, uh, it was a dad and it was a papa, the very same day they reached out to say thank you. That's just, it's just, just mind blowing, I think. And it happens all the time. You know, you maybe, you'd think if people were going to say thank you, it'd be a few weeks down the line when they, you know, they start to, they start to enter back into reality and they, they maybe think of the service and say, oh, we should go and say thank you to our celebrant. No, they will very often send you a text or an email, even pick up the phone in the same day to say thank you. That's how big an impact a well-crafted funeral ceremony can have on a family. And for somebody like me, my background is in the NHS. And so I was 12 years in the Scottish Ambulance Service as an a, a ambulance care assistant, as an ambulance technician, as an ambulance paramedic, as a helicopter paramedic. And that whole time, I've got one letter from a family saying thank you for trying to help save their son. It was a really important letter, but one letter. So either I was a really shit paramedic, or, or someone maybe agree with that, but, um, or there's just something about this work that, that touches people and resonates with people so deeply that they feel they have to reach out and, and say thanks to you, which is really beautiful. It's such a strong affirmation that you're doing a good job and 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 I love that so that's one rewarding part of it is when families reach out to you and say thank you so much you made such a difference or my dad would have loved it or you couldn't have got him any more accurately or whatever it may be but it's rewarding in other ways it's rewarding because you get to hear about people's life stories and that's quite extraordinary. Now, they're not all amazing life stories, but some of them are. Some of them are really tragic and dark and difficult and, and heartbreaking life stories. But most, most are stories of love and friendship and family and togetherness and you know you don't in a thousand ceremonies I don't have many where families have wanted me to list all the material stuff they have oh and he had a red portion he had this big house and he achieved this and achieved that they want to talk about the values that the person had they want to talk about the impact and the memories the person's left and so it's so wonderful to sit with a family and quite often when you go in to see a family, they may never have seen a celebrant led ceremony, but they know they don't want it to be clergy. So this is the option that's been offered to them and they've taken it for whatever reason. But it might be that they have, they're, they're a wee bit unsure, a wee bit apprehensive of the celebrant that's coming in. What are they going to ask? Will they know how to answer? You know, they can't remember lots of information or there's there's things in the person's past that they don't want to talk about. All these different things, like just like life, right? Everybody's life. And um, so you can turn up and, and you can come in and the family, will, you can see they're quite apprehensive. You know, their, their whole body language is closed off to you. They're all sitting tight to get tight together on the couch or it's, it's quite tense. The atmosphere is quite tense. And within half an hour... You're all having a cup of tea, the photos are out, and you're laughing. You're laughing about the beauty of this person's life and the joy that they, they experienced in their life and the joy that they brought to other people. That's such a magical part of this work, to be able to go in and put people at, at their ease and to build genuine, authentic rapport where a family is very quickly pick up that, you're not just sitting there with a bit of paper 
asking questions. All right, and where did you go to school? Thank you. You're just sitting back listening to this life story and really engaging with it and trying to, I always try to um, go back in my mind and try and imagine them as, you know, you may be the person who's died was 88, but they weren't always 88, right? So when they're telling the life story, I love to go back and try and imagine what they were like in the 1930s as a, a wee four or five year old running about the the streets playing tin, with a tin can or whatever it might be. I love to try and imagine that and I love these stories that come up and listening to that and a lot of these stories are getting lost to time if we don't write them down, if we don't record them, they're getting lost. So that's a beautiful part of this work, getting to listen to people's life stories and getting to record those life stories for all time. I love that. But I also love getting to meet the families. You often feel as if by the time you've left, and it's only a couple hours usually, you feel as if they're old friends. And um, you'll meet them as you, you know, especially if you're working in your local community, which most celebrants are, you'll meet them in Tesco and you'll have a wee chat about how everybody is. And you kind of feel, I often feel as if I'm like an extended part of the family because they have opened up um, and allowed you to come into the inner sanctuary and they've trusted you with all this information and then if you go away and treat that gently and treat it right and respect their wishes in every way, shape or form, you will get so much love back from your families that it's just absolutely beautiful. So that's another rewarding part of this work. You also get to of course, stand up and deliver these stories to people, to a room full of people. Say we're in a crematorium and you can have 100 people, you can have 300 people there. All friends, families, colleagues who have known the deceased. And you get to bring the essence of who that person was into the room, even though you maybe, probably didn't know them. And that's a great gift, but it's also so rewarding when you can see people relax because they immediately recognise the person that you're talking about and they they feel that you're honouring that life in the right way and they feel they're getting to say their goodbyes in the in, in uh, a nice way. So that's really lovely. It's also really lovely for a lot of celebrants who would uh, refer to themselves as not religious but spiritual in some way and so to be holding a space in a non-religious way but still with some spiritual support in it and by that I just mean that it's been held by forces that we don't understand and for some people that be God, you might say the universe, sacred, mother earth, you know the great unknown, uh, peace, love, it doesn't really matter. But to, to be somebody that can hold space in that way and then afterwards to have mourners to come forward and say, I'm a member of the church or I'm a member of you know the Catholic faith or whatever. I've never been to one of these ceremonies before, but that was absolutely beautiful. I really felt the presence of God in there. That's also really lovely when, when it hits the mark for family and friends. But you also get to meet other celebrants and other people in the industry, funeral directors and crematorium staff and and you can make some really great allies and friends in the industry. Not everybody, of course, it's real life, but I have many dear, dear ceremonialist friends that um, I know I could pick up the phone to any time and they know they can pick up the phone to me. And I don't just mean those people that have trained with Celebrant Training Scotland, I am very generous with my time and and whatever I have to share with other celebrants who have trained elsewhere because I know that we're all trying to do the best for the families and the couples and the people that we work with. So, um, And if I share with people, I know it'll come back to me tenfold in, in other ways. I'm a great believer in what you put out there will come back in different ways. So those are just a few of the ways in which this work really, really holds you and nourishes you and 
really makes you feel as if you're serving the world in a good way. So if that's you, if that makes the hairs in the back of your neck stand an end, as somebody said to me this morning when I was talking through all this stuff, then and you want to get in touch and chat about becoming a celebrant, then please do drop me a wee email to hello at celebrantrainingscotland.co.uk and we can have a wee chat. Okay. Speak to you later, fair far.